All right, guys, I'm down here at the pier on Boca Grande. I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I've got a bunch of shrimp, live shrimp, not a bunch. I got about two dozen shrimp. I was actually fishing down towards the pass this morning and it wasn't happening. So I've came here and we're gonna do a little uncut, unedited fishing trip. I'm doing a little intro and I'll cut that out. But other than that, I'm just gonna pretty much let the camera roll and just see if we can just catch a few fish. Not expecting anything massive, but you know, just gonna throw live bait, drop it down the rocks, see if we can get some snapper. Maybe a keeper snapper would be cool. But um, yeah, I'm gonna do a little something different and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Let's get to fishing. Simple pier fishing with live shrimp. See if we can put a few snapper on the deck here. Whoop. I'm gonna do this uncut, stuck me. Uncut, unedited, I'm just gonna fish for a few hours here, maybe an hour, maybe two. See how we do, and just throw it up. Real fishing, not, not just a highlight show. Current is just ripping in here. Coming around this corner, a little bit of an eddy there, some rocks. Let's see. I'm out here on Gasparilla Pier, Boca Grand Pier. It's the old train track. Just one other person out here on this Wednesday morning. This is my second spot. I went to, uh, there's a fish. A little red grouper. <laughs> Got some little gags out here, but look at that little mini fire truck. Isn't that precious? And he swallowed it. How'd he swallow this circle hook? Come on, man. Let's see if I can get this out. I'm killing him. Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's coming. There you go. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it and grow up to be a monster. So cool. All right, buddy, get out of here. What we got here? Jack blowing up. Let me uh, let me get back in the water here. Then I'll keep talking. Remember what I was talking about. Are they, are they Jack? Yeah, they Jack. Yeah, I've been chasing Jack all morning over at the seawall down at the pass, and um, it's ridiculous. I've been throwing this bait at him, dropping the shrimp right in the middle of schools of big Jack, schooling Jack, feeding Jack, and I haven't caught nothing. So, moved over here to the pier. Of course, I wasn't targeting those jack. I was trying to target snook. I hooked into one snook. He ended up spitting it, but, uh, oop. Oh, there's a fish. He ended up spitting the hook, but they just, they just weren't feeding very much. Like, at all. I could see, I could sight fish them a little bit. They're, they're not as thick, but I was able to sight fish a few and just put it, put this shrimp right in front of them. They wanted nothing to do with it. It was a full moon last night, so it may have something to do with it. But anyway, let's see. Let's see if we can get any snapper here. Maybe a couple little, a couple little grouper that'll play along. Here's another fish. Little snapper. Well, that's what we're here for. We're just here to have fun. Especially since this is Plan B. Plan A, as I said, wasn't working out. So. Hey, hoo, 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 hoo. he almost got me. Got my line. Now he won't let that go. Once these snapper are locked down, man, make sure it ain't on your finger. Little guy. All right. Two casts, three casts, two fish.
I know there's probably a few snook down here too. If I can put a few 13 inchers in the on the deck, I will take them home. Just free lining this little two aught hook. Oh, actually, I got that grouper on a on a hook on a uh, had a couple split shots on, but. Haven't fished on this pier in years. Years and years. This is a great spot to come out in the spring with lanterns and uh, on an outgoing tide. You got grass flats out there. The tide just dumps out, heading right out to the Gulf, which is not too far behind me, Little Gasparilla Pass. And you can have so much fun catching shrimp. Look at all these glass minnows. Something was just blowing them up. You have so much fun dip netting shrimp. And the snook, they just swim around the circle of your light. You hang the light down from the from the piling here. And what happens is the ball of the bait just balls up. It's like National Geographic, for real. It just the ball bait will just swim around your light in a circle for hours. The snook sit on the shadows and just come in there and just pick off fish, pick off bait left and right. And the shrimp just come floating by. So you're catching shrimp, you're catching fish, and dolphin just come tearing through, jacks, shark come through, spotted eagle ray, squid. It's unbelievable. The, the life out here. Well, you're seeing it now. I mean, look at all that bait. But at nighttime, it's just another level. There we go. There's another one. Little bitty itty. Might need to um, go to that split shot. Switch back to that split shot. Let's see if we get down here again. Where all these grouper are. <clears throat> little shrimp, little shrimp, little red grouper on the first cast, that was cool. Uh oh, am I going the wrong way? Oh, come on, one more, oh boy. Yeah, I haven't fished with live bait in quite a while. The live shrimp is hard to pass up. Oh, hit. Now one thing you can do to weed through these, these little bait stealers is drop down a little pinfish instead. Not gonna get nearly as many bites, but the bites you get are gonna be good. Get a little bit bigger piece of bait on here. This thing's little. There's a better shrimp. This is Gasparilla Sound. You're looking at the mouth of Widden Bay over there. There's devilfish way out there at the island. There's a fish. Sorry about that, guys. My battery died. Hold still. I know you want to stick me. Poke me and bite me. 
All right, well. Let's see if there's anything bigger down there. Come on now. Any keeper snapper? Like I said, better chance of getting keepers with using pinfish. Better put this mask on my face here so I don't get, there's a better, no, 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 no. Yeah, that was a better fish. Maybe we're building a bite here. We are building a bite. As John Skinner would say. Great current flow, all kinds of bait down there. That definitely felt like a better fish. There we go. Nope, gotta be kidding me. How did that come off again? Circle hook ain't supposed to have that happening. All right. This guy's frisky. He's gonna be in trouble down there. He's gonna be in trouble. I'm in the rocks, I can feel that. <laughs> oh, this is getting frustrating. There's a bigger shrimp, dead. Let's just impale him. Make sure he doesn't get picked clean. Let's keep this hook exposed though. Look at that. Let's get the hook ex exposed. Here we go. This is gonna happen right here. This is gonna happen. Man, I wanna get over there in a little better position to stand. Ooh, the water is ripping. As I was saying, you got a Dog Island over there, Whidden Bay, Catfish Creek, Whidden Bay, and the back entrance to Bull Bay. And this whole body of water right here is Gasparilla Sound. This is a great pier, probably the best pier on the harbor other than maybe, I don't know, Boquilia, what do you say? Any of you guys out there, pier fishermen, what do you like better, Boca Grand Pier or Boquilia? Boquilia is on the flats. This has got more structure, more water flow. But there's a, there's a lot of good fish out there I see posted like on Facebook, people get. But this is a great spot to, oh, here comes a kid, take your kid, take some shrimp and feed the fish like I apparently am doing right now. sideways there for a second thought it was a little bigger okay okay pretty fish though well, once this water clears up I'll hopefully be getting out and doing a little bit of spear fishing for some of these snapper inshore spear, spear fishing is what I like to do once in a while snapper sheephead sand brim wouldn't mind getting a mullet every now and then but they are they are hard to hit look at that schoolmaster I do believe 
so cool. And you think of mangroves pretty, look at that. All right, let me tilt you down a little bit better, give you all a better angle. Beautiful. Look at that, man, we're offshore fishing. Catching schoolmasters, mangs, red grouper. Woo! I'm gonna let you go. Cool fish. Looks like a cross between a mangrove snapper and a maybe a yellowtail snapper. There's a better angle. Let's see if I can get a thumbnail here, maybe. That boat in the background. See you, buddy. Boom. See, that's what's fun about this. You just you could come out here and catch a dozen, two dozen fish, and four or five species. Right there kid that went by slipper coming take a kid out here young kid 5 to 10 to 12 15 years old whatever and they just have an absolute blast I'm just using the same rod and reel I use the same rod and reel for just about everything 2500 set up went down to the end I was wanting to fish the end but I stopped here and I got fish here anyway so what the heck but um, I use the same rod and reel for everything. I know it's bad, but, you know. I'm just not a big gear guy. Like, gotta have 2,500 for this, 3,500 for this, and 4,500 for that. I mean, if I'm going offshore fishing, obviously, we're switching up tackle, but. Anyway, 2,500, 10 pound braid. If I wanted to drop this down to like a seven pound, eight pound braid, and and a little 1500 little bass rod and reel it could be even more fun a little ultra light even come out here with a little pan fish rod of course you'll end up getting smoked by something big but all right bait got bit right in half there see they still want live shrimp i put that big dead one down there And it took a while for him to get eat. And here we go with the head. No, they finally they finally did finish it off, but that half a shrimp there wasn't getting hit. Here's a dead shrimp. I took him like this. Make him look alive. Move him along a little bit. A little bitty skiff out there running. Looks like a little shallow sport or something. We'll be back on the flats before you know it. I hear my my marina might be being sold. I know it's for sale. Boy, I hope not. I don't have to trailer a boat like everybody else. Okay, there's a better fish. You don't want to hook that one on ultralight. What do we got here? Little, what do I got here? Yeah, a little better fish. Yeah, you could handle him on ultralight. He hit hard for a second there, though. But you could handle him on ultralight. What do we got here? We got a warrior. Look at this. That's a keeper snapper. And he's got another. Look at that. He broke somebody off. A little monster. Warrior. Still feeding. That little circle hook in him. He keep. I don't have my. I don't have a measurement, but he go ten. Uh, he go eleven. I'll let him go. If I get a big one, I'll keep him. But that's a nice fish. That was a nice fish. Heck yeah. That was cool. Helped him out. Let's see here. Man, I just love to put a 15 incher up here on the deck. I used to fish here all the time as teenagers. A friend of mine, we came out here a bunch of us buddies. It's amazing how few fish you catch when you go out with like a bunch of friends. Never caught anything much, but we came out here a bunch of us. And my one friend that was with us is not a fisherman, didn't really like fishing. 
He's just hanging out. And we caught a catfish, little catfish, little 12 inch catfish, man. Those are the most dangerous. He was on the dock and he, he, he just knew catfish were no good. We weren't happy about, you know, catching a catfish or whatever. And he thought he'd be funny and smash it, step on it with his super thin little flip flops. And the catfish was laying there and his dorsal fin was down. He was just flat as can be. And I just look over and see my buddy reaching up, standing up, big foot stomp. As he's coming down, I watch it and I'm thinking, what is he doing? And right as he's coming down, that little fin just, just gently and slowly just went straight up. He stomped on the spine of that catfish, little mud cat, hard. And that thing went in deep. He pulled up his foot, thing is stuck to his foot. Kick, shakes it off. And uh, he was in serious pain for many hours. And he's like, see, this is why I don't like fishing. I hate fishing. Now he hates fishing even more. So anyway, don't mess with catfish. And don't kill catfish just because you caught a catfish. Just let the catfish go. All right, come on now. What happened? What the heck? You know, I'm just feeding fish now like crazy. Well, got a decent snapper. Got a schoolmaster. And then now, kind of slowed down. Gotta be more down there. Come on. Love to get a big one. Big, big, big. 15 inch fish taco size snapper. Man, this is getting, this is, something ain't right here, guys. Something ain't right. I'm gonna try hooking them a little different. There we go. There we go. Get out of there. Get out of there. Sometimes the simplest fishing is the best fishing. I mean, you can power fish all day long with artificials out there in the flats looking for that big red, catch two or three fish. It's a lot of work. This right here, this is for good times. Easy, oh easy money. Easy money. Wish I did have just a little lighter rod here in the reel. Oh. I'll tell you another funny story about this pier. Actually, when I when I, I mean when I was uh, dating, me and my wife were dating. We would come out here, you get out like eight nine o'clock at night, right as it's just got dark. Actually, the best time is to get here just before dark. Get your lantern in the water. There's a fish. There's a monster. But if you want to avoid the crowds, you know, you just go to the end of this pier, and you used to be able to hop right off, and, and there was dry land under your feet. Now it's, it's a channel cut that runs through there. But anyway, we would walk all the way to the end. It's about the size of the snapper that my grandpa caught. Got choked down by a 40 inch cobia on a one aught circle hook. We got that cobia too. And as a shark actually bit him in the belly as he was getting reeled in. So that was another fish story for another day. Anyway, you go all the way down to the end here, you hop across and you walk through those woods. And it's a pretty far walk. And the train track continues once you get down to the other end. Only there's no deck, there's no rails, there's missing boards, and the fishing is way better. You know, there's just no pressure, really. I mean, I, you got plenty of pressure from the boats. I should say no pressure, but there's nobody standing on the docks with you. And since the rail is not in the way, you just easily can stand on those big, massive beams. And, uh, I don't know, fish. You got a little, 
seaweed on them. Um, what was I even talking about? Oh, so anyway, yeah, you can go all the way down there. That's where we used to really fish a lot. When we be, when we would be out here shrimping, and uh, actually I'll go a different direction on a different story. I was when we were out there one time. I was out there and had a big ladyfish. I mean big, a 16, 17 inch lady. It was big. It was stupid to have it out for bait, but I had a big old conventional setup, you know, deep drop and reel. So I put him down. And I was walking basically on this beam right here, right here, this long beam. And again, there was no rail. It was sunset. I had him hooked right through the back. Had the drag set real loose. And I'm walking along, just walking along like this. Got the current flowing just like it's now. And just swimming him along the trussles. And he got smoked. And I wasn't even paying attention. I'm just walking like this. Da -da 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 -da. Got my hand hanging off. I'm looking straight ahead as I'm walking. And just whoop, I just about went in. And must have been a big, big, big shark. Could have been a tarpon, but I don't think so. It never jumped. It just started absolutely dumping line, heading out into the bay so fast. And I tried to thumb him and slow it down, burnt my thumb. Finally got a hold of the drags to where he started to slow down and then it just boom snapped it he took off with i don't even know 100 yards of line and i learned my lesson if you're using massive whole ladyfish for bait and you're just standing on a dock just hold on with two hands and be ready all right let's get back to fishing here talking i got another one here oh there we go Oh, what do we got? Oh, he was scaring. All the bait was just darting left and right. I was just kind of messing with him. I should have should have brought him up. It was another snapper. Second best one of the day, but nothing to write home about. So, yeah, I'm going to do some of these longer form videos. And just see how they do. There's a fish. No editing, no sitting there in front of the computer, which I hate to do unless I'm watching YouTube. I don't mind that, but I don't like editing. And so let's just have fun with these videos. I understand if you can't watch it all, you can just skim through and watch the beginning and the middle and the end. But whatever, I, I totally get that. But I started this channel to have fun fishing, and so... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have fun, mix it up, do a little bit of different video style for a little while. And we'll see. We'll see if it works. We'll see if it doesn't. Tangled. There we go. I have a second channel and a lot of editing time. A lot of my editing time spent it's been spent over there i think i've snagged somebody else's line and those are getting really really good views so I kind of have focused over there at that yet i still want to fish i just want to fish but every, every time i have to fish I, I have to video it i just want to i don't even want to fish without videoing it i know i don't know why it's terrible but anyway then if i'm videoing it and then i have to edit it and then it takes like a whole other day, you know, half a day to edit it. And I, don't, I have less time to go fishing. So we're going to try this. We're going to try just going and fishing. And then just throwing the video up. See what happens. So then, at the end of the day, it's more fishing. That's the plan. Hope you, hope you understood what I just was saying. There's fish are blowing up over here. It's the second time. They've been crashing over here. I wonder if it's snook or is it... Jack, here's some fish. I see. Well, the current is much slower over here as it turns the turns. It really starts to pick up as soon as it turns this corner. 
There's a snook. Okay, you know what? Let's, uh, as soon as I lose this shrimp, I'm going to free line. Let me free line a fish right here. Let me free line this shrimp. Feed this snook. I need a lively one. Yeah, you'll have to do. All right. A couple little snook hanging out here. Now, again, last night was a full moon. So the fish are a little full right now. Okay, there we go. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. A couple of nice snook right there. A couple of nice snook. There's one. Oh! Come on, man. What's this happening? Got this little circle hook. I didn't set the hook, I promise. Yeah, maybe I did set the hook just a touch. That was my bad. Well, that was a good sign. Much more aggressive than the ones out at the pass this morning. Let's see if I can just swim him into there. There you go. Let's see if I spooked him. There. Ah, snapper. Snapper, I don't see the snook now. Let's go over here and take a better look. All kinds of needle nose. Those little needle nose are great bait when you're doing the lights out here. When you're shrimping. Okay, there's some snook. I got too close to him. Too close. So, uh, yeah, those, those, those needle nose. Oh, man. Bait stealers, guys, are really getting obnoxious here. Yeah, looking for one of them snook. Anyway, you take this ballyhoo, break off their beak, or you don't have to. And then you hook them right through the eyes, just right through the eyes, which slows them down a little bit, and they just swim. You just free line them, swim them right around the top, you know, right on the surface with the light, in the light, or just in the shadows. Man, them snook love them. Because mostly they're keyed in on all the... Mostly they're keyed in on all the white bait that's circling. And so if they can get a shot at one of those bigger baits, they they take advantage of it. All right, come on. All those snook, there was four or five of them right there. I hooked the one and now they've left. Might have to let this settle down for a minute. And I don't think my shadow is helping any. You know, I think I need to have a two a one odd hook. Good morning. Howdy. I think this two odd hook's just a little big for what I'm doing. Next time I come out, I think I might just bring a little lighter setup. And a little smaller hook, a little one-aught circle hook. Stealer. All right, let's switch back. These split shots, and then we'll let those snook settle down a little bit. Hopefully, they'll come back before I run out of bait. I'm only down to about a half a dozen left. Huh. 
Half a dozen left. Let's see if we can get a keeper here. And I'm just blowing through them. Yeah, little little bait stealers, yeah. little snapper. Feeling it. Ooh, this is getting ridiculous. Let's thread him on here a little bit. There we go. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Well, he's got a fat stomach, too. He's been eating all my shrimp. Give me that one back. Give me that back. Get out of here. Yeah, they'll bite you. They're mean. What do you usually catch off of here? That little snapper. Little snapper? Yeah. Sheephead in the winter time. Yeah. You get reds and, and uh, trout? Uh, you can. You can a little bit. Yeah, there's plenty of snook. There's plenty of snook here too, yeah. Can you keep the snook now? Uh, I don't think they're in season right now, but you can keep them when they're in season. All my bait. A lot redder than the last one. Oh man. All right, well, we are getting down to the bottom of the barrel here. If I catch a pinfish, I could. Strip him up, strip, <laughs> strip, strip him, fillet it and strip it. That'd be a good bait. We'll come out here and try it again next time with a little better bait. A little more shrimp. Wasted too many today, early this morning. I was trying to get some snook down at the pass. Another little schoolmaster. Beautiful. Pretty little schoolmaster. And they're, they're fat, solid. Feeding all night on that full moon. Look at him looking at me. How many we got left? We got three left. Mm -hmm. 
just gonna mangle and tangle this guy on here so he don't get loose. All right, come on. Here we go. Keeper, keeper. There's a fish. Oh man, it's a little guy. Flipping through the eye. Let's see if we can get this out, buddy. There you go. There you go. Got a fish down there. What's he got? Jack. Got a little jack. Looks like a jack. Yep. Oh yeah. Now look at this boat down here. Let me show you this boat stuck. It is a stingray, Cole. It is. It's a stingray. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Man, look at this water flow. Man, this water is just dumping out of here. Let me show you guys this boat real quick. I know I was going to leave it uncut, but those kind of, but those uh, people standing there making me not want to talk i don't like talking in front of a bunch of people so anyway i'm gonna go back i've got three shrimp left but look at this this thing got stuck here in between the last storm yep that's what happens when you don't tie her off properly or you get a bad enough storm this thing looks like it was a wreck to begin with man look at this water just dumping out southern stingray All right, guys, well, that's going to do it. I kind of clammed up there once the people came and they were watching me catch fish and just kind of standing around for a while, and I basically ran out of bait while they were there. So anyway, next time I'm going to bring a few more bait, a few more shrimp, and maybe bring a few little pinfish as well, see if we can get to a little bigger bite. Caught a couple cool different species. Wasn't expecting to catch here off the pier. But anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.